Pacoima, California, 2010. At a little parish church in this humble section of the San Fernando Valley, something remarkable is happening. A parish priest, a football coach, and several extraordinary young men have inaugurated a unique program for training Catholic boys and young men to serve at the altar. Their efforts have caught the attention of the local bishop and promise to have a profound impact far beyond the confines of this little community, perhaps even becoming a template for the church at large. St. Joseph Communications took our cameras to Guardian Angel Parish to speak to the men behind this exciting new program, the Society of the Guardians of the Altar. It's called the Society of the Guardians of the Altar, and there are various levels to it now that we've finally brought it, the first group of boys through the program. But it, it took its own shape as we went through. Um, originally, I had asked uh, Mr. Mario Felix, who is the one who's assisted me with this, and I just asked him if he would take over the altar servers uh, in general. But um, it began to take a life of its own through the prayer of the parish, um, as well as through the response of these young men. I had this idea of forming altar servers and uh, not exactly knowing what the structure to use. I prayed about it and uh, lo and behold a friend of mine, a good friend of mine for years, uh, emailed me a, uh, a program called the Knights of the Altar that was prevalent I guess in the in the 50s. A rather large book and I read it and I knew it couldn't be done the way it was done in the 50s as it is in 2010 so I had to amend the whole the whole book to try to fit it and it just so happened that since our parish name is is guardian angel I figured it was kind of you know appropriate to call it guardians of the altar just kind of helped to give it that that personal touch to it that it belonged to us a guardian angel he has uh, come up with a plan to try to teach young men that serving at the altar is noble. Serving at the altar is, in their language, it's cool. It's manly. And that's the concept which I wanted to create. And, you know, with enough prayer, with the help of the Holy Spirit, it developed into, that's exactly what it developed in. It's almost as if I really didn't do a whole lot, just facilitated what God had wanted. And that, that was the easy part about it. I mean, there was no really, you know, stressing myself out, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. It just all came to me. I mean, it, just, it was all put in my lap, and I just had to, that's why I'm the director. <laughs> because I just put it all together. That's, that's simply and easy. You know, if the kids ask me, you know, well, what are you? I'm just like the manager of a baseball team. I don't play the game. I never served on the altar. But I just put, the, I just put it together and make sure I feel the team out there is going to look good. We had, first of all, begin to promote more vocations. Um, that has been a big uh, thrust within the Archdiocese of Los Angeles because our, our numbers into the seminary are very low. And so uh, one of the efforts was to, how do we recruit more young men to start serving Mass. We had the little boys, but uh, where were the young, older ones? And also we had all, girls that were serving as well. So how do we begin to bring up the number of the boys and little by little minimize the, the number of girls until finally we, we're no longer recruiting girls. Uh, the only girls that serve in the Mass right now are the ones that have been in it since we've start, before we started this program. I've taught confirmation for 15 years and for the first 10 years of those we always had mixed classes and I'm, I had asked Father Steve if somehow we could separate the boys from the girls to see how that would work and if you notice boys seem a little bit, if, if a girl is going to do something, a boy, especially from the age of 10 and up, they really don't want to do it with the girls because if the girl's going to do it, well, then let the girls do it. And so I knew that something had to be formed with just boys to allow them to regain the, the idea that there's, there's a manhood in this. You know, they see, they see the girls on the altar and they say, well, what do we need to be there for if the girls are going to take care of it? It's an easy escape for them. It's an easy, easy way to say, no, I don't want it. But if we tell the boys that, that at, at some point, you look, there are, no, there are no women priests. And why are we targeting boys? I'll tell you why. Pope John Paul II, he said that altar boys, he says, this is the garden for vocations. 
May he rest in peace, servant of God. So Pope John Paul II, he addressed this several years before he passed away, that the vocations are going to come from the garden of altar boys. And so he understood that to bring a young man to serve with a holy priest at the altar and to be that close to the tabernacle and to see the, the rubrics of the mass celebrated with dignity, this is going to impact their soul, not only for time but for eternity. We don't push vocations on them. What we do is, is, especially what we've done in the past six months since we started the program, our motto is Fiat Voluntas Tua, which means Thy will be done. We don't create priests. God creates priests. And only God can make priests. We just facilitate the direction that the Holy Spirit wants to call them. And our emphasis is to ask, to continually through prayer, through spiritual formation, is to ask, what is God's will in my life? And I say, you'll be a father in either way. You'll either be the father of many spiritual children, or you'll be a father of, of a wonderful family. So in some way, shape, or form, this program is going to benefit the church at large. They're all either going to be good, solid Catholic husbands and fathers, or quite possibly, some of them might just answer the, the call to full service in the church as a priest, a brother, or a deacon. And whether that call comes or not, I hope so. And we pray that it does. But it's just to make men. Simple. Just, just to make men who follow God's will. God will take care of the rest. They have to be in high school. Um, and they have to be able to make a strong commitment. It was six months of formation of not just learning how to serve Mass, but knowing the importance of reverence, posture, um, the things that they handle. Uh, what is the Mass about, the things that the priest does, the prayers that he says, the gestures and what theirs are as well, knowing everything in the sacristy, um, and also life of prayer because they're called to be uh, witnesses at home and in their schools. And so it's to give them a sense of dignity as young men as being part of the Catholic Church, but also most especially being of service at the altar. As they, these young men start to understand their faith, as they start to pray, as they start understanding, especially with the, with the rigorous training that we put them through. I mean, it's not simple, it's very difficult. Because when I first asked them, I asked, I, they asked, well, what's it, what's it entail? And I said one thing, hard work. All the formation to get to this point was, was necessary for me to grow in, in my spirituality and to actually know why I'm up there on, the, on, the, on that altar and to do what I'm, what I'm doing right now. You just understand more. Through this whole process, you understand more and more of what the Mass is and why you're up there. And it's, it's a great feeling. It's an honor. I, I've been a football coach for 17 years. And I take the same approach as coaching football as I do with these guys. It is, you know, it's amazing to me what kids will do to play football. It's amazing how they'll show up for practice every single day. How they'll, they'll, they'll sweat and they'll throw up and they'll do every, whatever they have to do to play football. And I ask these guys, and many of them do play football. You're willing to do that for something that's going to end. What are you going to do for something that's going to last forever? Um, I know why I'm serving a lot more. I'm not just up there just to help the priest. I'm up there for a whole different reason, and that's to serve God. I've, I've definitely grown in my faith. Um, all aspects I've learned about the Mass in particular. Um, back you know, before this program, I used to serve just to help out with the Mass, not knowing what goes on, uh, the certain prayers during the Mass. So this has helped me grow spiritually and, and um, mentally to know where you're at during, on the altar. The mentor of these kids, of these uh, teenagers, Mario Felix, he's instilled into these kids that the sanctuary is your domain. You're like that angel with the flaming sword in the Garden of Eden. Nobody violates the sanctuary. Nobody violates the dignity of the Mass. You are called as altar boys to protect that priest, because he's in persona Christi, and to protect all the noble chalices and accoutrements that are used at Holy Mass, and most especially to guard and defend the tabernacle where the Blessed Sacrament our Lord reposes. I think also these boys are building an infrastructure within the parish 
where they're going to be like a fraternity in the good sense of the word. They're going to build a strong bond with each other. And in fact, they do. They do a lot of stuff outside of the church together. Uh, I believe that the, the gentlemen who join the society do have the sense of, okay, they have to serve, and that kind of brings them together. Well, I have to know about the other guy on the altar, know his movements, know how he acts, and, and different things like that. But I would say in the brotherhood aspect of it, that's something that's not too inherent within the society itself. There's guidelines, there's, there's different things you have to follow within the society, which are great and good. But it's the brotherhood aspect that's not written on paper is what we really emphasize to them. You know, that they grow together spiritually, that they learn these rules because of course, you know, even as a, as a church, you know, as a universal church, we were given these rules and that's what binds us together. But what the faith draws out is that, that fraternity or, you know, just the, communi the communal aspect of it. The sense of brotherhood that uh, we all, all felt together. Um, we uh, not only through, we didn't only do formation, we also did uh, activities together that, that brought us closer and uh, made it a, a, a real society where we felt all in union. And that's what we want to show these guys, what the church is, what is it that brings us together, that it's not just following a set of rules and, and living together, that even outside of those rules, you could go out and have a good football game like we had the other day, or you know, have a good barbecue, have a good meal, you know, together and have a good time doing it, you know, not force each other to have to do it. And so within the program, it requires the, the guys to, to let go of who they are and their, their prejudices, their biases, and to, to see the other individual as being a creature of God, you know, belonging to God. That as long as each and every one of them are striving towards that same goal, they share a common brotherhood. Some of them I didn't even know, and now they're like real, real good friends now. I hang out with them a lot more do a lot of activities together. They're real cool. They're real great guys. They're all real cool. And that's what brings them together. I mean, I could see a lot of the guys, when they first came in, you, you kind of look at them like, man, that guy would have never, you know, hung out with that guy. Or that guy would have never talked to that guy before. And now they're all doing one thing, almost like a flock of birds. Wherever they go, everybody goes, you know? And it's, it's amazing to see the, the, the great movement of the spirit within the group. You know, that they all stick together and they enjoy one, in, one another. And that's really what the society is bringing together, that they stay together in that spirit, but also take that spirit back to the altar and serve God. Um, you know, I wanted to grow my faith um, as brothers. It's, it's, like a, it's like a brotherhood, you know, and um, we wanted to grow in faith together to learn and just learn, uh, learn how to pray. And uh, that's, that's basically it. And uh, I, I share with them, I begin the, their meetings with them uh, with evening prayer when they gather. Um, we have a holy hour once a month that we call the family hour of prayer. And all of them are here and they're vested and uh, they join in that holy hour. And uh, also afterwards, um, we, I take them out for, for, for dinner right after that and we spend time with each other. Yesterday we had a, a whole day of picnic where we played football, volleyball, um, and enjoyed each other's company with their families as well. Um, so it allows me to see that the grace of God is working. And, but what they need is to know that they are loved by their church, they have a place in the church, and also that their priest loves them. And they themselves have formed a bond. They, they all weren't friends before they started, but this has caused, created a bond within them, a brotherly bond, um, to where they are accountable to one another, and they learn respect for one another. And the parish community, that they're teenagers, are recognizing that there is something going on and that it is possible for a teenager, a young person, to really love their faith and be active in the church. My son's a seminarian, and uh, it was during the summer, so the seminary is closed, but he has the keys to the seminary. So I said, let's take the boys to the seminary, just to pray. And we went there and prayed. We prayed in the chapel, and, and we showed them around, took them to the sacristy and all that. And they enjoyed it. And one of the young men came up to me and says, I, I think I could live here. And I said, good, keep that thought in your mind. You know, if that's what you think, if that's what God's calling you to do, simply God's will, nothing more. Um, last year during the year for the priest, um, I started a prayer campaign in the whole parish. We have seven masses, one started on Saturday night and six on Sunday. And each mass had its own statue of the Good Shepherd and a priestly stole. 
and one family at every Mass every Sunday took it home for the week to pray as a family for vocations. And halfway through that, um, well actually in the November of last year, I invited nine boys from our parish community to go to a vocation retreat that the Confraternity of Catholic Clergy, of which I belong to, puts on every year the day after Thanksgiving. And I was the largest group I've ever taken, and I attributed to the response, the prayer of the people for vocations. And then all these boys accepted the invitation to become guardians of the altar. I also see this as 35 years ago when I was a teenager, and I went to a public school like these young men, I can relate to them. And a Catholic priest grabbed all of these young men, we had about 12 of us, we were football players, we were soccer players, we were baseball players, we were athletes. And this priest got us up on the altar every Sunday to serve Mass. People said, why are you doing this? And we said, because we know what the Mass is. It's Jesus Christ, it's an honor to serve. So when I saw this 35 years later as a 54-year-old man watching these young men serve, it brought back memories. And I'll tell you this, I've been involved with Catholic evangelization for 31 years. And I believe the formation that I got as a teenager at the altar has given me the special graces to persevere in my own vocation as a father of four children. And I could see this continuing today with this program. When I was growing up, I was a part of something very similar in my own home parish of Nativity in El Monte in the San Gabriel Valley. And uh, I was one, we didn't have the titles that we given to these boys, but I was called a head server. And so I helped train new altar servers. Um, and I was a uh, sacristan at the Mass and acted as a Master of Ceremonies. And uh, we had great support of the pastor. Uh, the priests were very much involved with us as well. Um, for me now as a priest, to be able to see these boys in high school, and I haven't seen it since the time I was in high school, uh, now these boys knowing how to dress um, to, to, to look sharp when they come to Mass, the best for, for, for Christ at Mass, um, as well as finding, developing a love for what they do at Mass. I have an old friend of mine who's, uh, he's about 80 years old, and he comes from Milwaukee, in the tough side, of, tough side of town of Milwaukee, and I was asking him questions like, what do you think I should do? And he goes, well, I'll tell you what we used to do back in the old town. You know, we get the biggest, baddest guys in the, in the, in the city, in our, in our parish, and we make them the head altar servers. And they were, they were proud of doing that. But what you did was you established them as the leaders, and the little guys behind them would follow. So as they look at these teenagers, young adults at the altar, that are from their neighborhood, from their junior highs and high schools, you know, uh, they're going to say, wow. There's just something different about my neighbor. Uh, he's found a sense of purpose now that he's serving in the altar. And you know, maybe, maybe I'm called to do the same thing. Maybe I'm called to get him more involved in my parish. Maybe God is calling me to greater service than just sitting here in the pew and being a spectator. Are there other friends that are not in this yeah. program? Well, they, they think, well, my friends think it's, it's something that's it's cool. It's like, something new, they've never heard about it. Um, I just tell them, you know, about, about the program, what, what it's about, what it's for. Um, it helps you grow, like I tell everybody, you know. It's not just, just to look good on the altar, you know, it, it helps you grow in faith. It shows other people the, the main focus of the Mass, and Jesus Christ, and what's happening on the altar. And if we can inspire these young men early to be leaders, protectors, and providers, to be Christians that have drive, determination, and that have dedication, they're going to be good, solid men in the future, and they're going to help the, the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, in some way, shape, or form in a very big way. And guess what? They're not going to be part of the criminal justice system. They're going to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. These guys themselves are going to be the backbone of the society. Um, they're the ones who are going to go into, the, into these classrooms and teach the young kids how to serve. These are the ones that are going to teach the kids that are existing and ready in our parish how to serve. We're making leaders. That's what we're trying to do. Leaders in the, in, in so that they will be responsible enough men to do God's will in their life. I'm the father of 11 kids. And he's my oldest son. Um, 
He's a great kid who, who found his vocation when he got out of high school. In high school, I really didn't want to join the priesthood. <laughs> I was one of those rebellious, you know, high school kids who just didn't want to do it. You know, it wasn't for me. God was calling me, and I, I heard God's call, but the whole time it was, it's not for me. It's not for me. And it, it wasn't until God pretty much smacked me in the face that I realized, okay, it is for me. Then I decided my junior year of, of college that I would apply for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and applied, and God's greatness and will, and I got into the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and since then I've been in formation process through the Archdiocese, and that really inspired me to, to come back to the, to the parish level and get other guys who were just like me, you know, just fighting the call or have a call to something else, you know, to recognize, you know, God's call in their lives as, as I did. You know, and it's always a great joy to, to be with the, the younger guys and just associate with them and talk with them and, and really help them to grow because not only do, do they grow, but I also grow in, in, in a secure foundation for my own vocation. It's really an equal balance to both. I'm helping them and they're helping me and it's just, it's an awesome experience, really great. My job as a father is to do one thing, make sure my kids get to heaven. If I've done that, then I've accomplished everything I need to do in, in life. And that's what I tell my kids. And they, you know, my oldest son took hold of that. And he said, you know, this is what I want to do. And I'm proud of him. You know, my second son's an Army Ranger. I'm just as proud as him as for being an Army Ranger as I am my son who's a seminarian. It's the same. You know, I, I, I hold my kids in all the same regard. To love them and to make sure they get to heaven. Simply as that. Actually, last May, when our regional bishop, Bishop Gerald Wilkerson, he came to celebrate our confirmation, and that was the first big mass, so to speak, of uh, coming out into the public uh, with the guardians of the altar. And as Bishop Wilkerson celebrated the mass, at the end of it, um, he congratulated the boys, thanked them for such a well, good job that they did. Then he sent me a letter a few days later congratulating me and the parish for having well-formed teenagers, not only the, confir the confirmandi, but the, well, the boys that served the Mass. Um, he was very impressed with them. Well, we had to practice the day before because we didn't know what was going on. So we practiced and we, we did it pretty well, actually. We, we had our mess ups here and there, like everyone does. And then the bishop comes up after us. He thought it was a great serving, so he decided to announce it. We didn't think so, though. Really, the, the gentlemen don't look for affirmations. What they look for is more criticism. <laughs> they always come back after Mass, they come into me and say, okay, what did you do wrong? Because I'm always in the back, I'm always helping with, with the serving process. And I'll tell them, you know, you guys looked great. To the people, you looked awesome. To the bishop, you did great. You know, even though I have my criticisms because I know every little intricate detail, they still know that what they did is far and be above and beyond what anybody else is calling them to do. And the bishop really didn't have to say it. The bishop didn't have to give them affirmation. They knew that just serving Christ on the altar was enough affirmation for them. And that's all they needed. And they were happy with that. You know, it wasn't until uh, Father uh, Stephen Gatron came back from, a, from a, a deanery meeting that he had received such great praise for his altar serving. And the bishop stood up and singled out Father Stephen for saying, I've never had such great servers. And then he asked me to share what I was doing with that at um, our following deanery meeting with all the parishes and the pastors and associates that come together once a month and what I was doing and I attributed again to the year of the priests, the prayer for vocations that we were doing in the parish as well as what the vocation office was asking us to do something in our parish to promote vocations and make the need visible and to show the fruits of what we were doing. For them to hear that was just an extra. It was something extra, it was like almost a cherry on top for them, you know, and, that, and they enjoyed it and they saw, oh wow, we are having an influence, we are having an effect within the church. And so um, the bishop is, is, is very excited about it, um, and I don't know if any other pastors are doing something like this, but uh, hopefully we begin to spread the news now that we have put together a, a handbook, as well as the various ceremonies that they go through is taking different levels, because now that we have our first generation, now the young kids that are actually in grade school that are altar servers, they will be called apprentices. And they will be under the tutelage of the, the guardians of the altar, the teenage boys. And once they get into eighth grade and going into high school, then they would be able to request then at invitation to become a guardian and then what we call a master guardian. Um, and they also then take charge of, 
of one of the masses and training the new servers as well and making sure that everything is prepared for the mass. I believe that what's happening at this little parish in Pacoima, this little insignificant part of the Northeast San Fernando Valley that, you know, most people won't dare tread in that area. Uh, the fact is, I think this could be a paradigm for the Catholic Church all over the country, without a doubt here in California. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to turn boys into men by teaching them the Catholic faith through the formation of their conscience, by teaching them virtue, by teaching them that the greatest thing that you can do is to serve God. I, I see things uh, a lot differently, like the way the world is, uh, is, uh, is challenging us as a society. It's, it, it's taught me to grow more in my faith and also to, to be able to be strong in the world. Once again, it helps me understand more, more what it is. And it helps me not only inside the church or on the altar, but outside of the church. Like with that school, going to a public school, it's harder. And so I tell them the, the same thing, it's, it's hard. It's something you need to grow up with. I'm, I'm more able to, to have the courage to stand up to people, you know, at school, at college, just to, you know, stand up for my faith, um, now that I know a little bit more, even though I'm still learning. I'm, my faith is I'm growing up, basically, is what, it, what you can say. I'm growing as a man uh, at home and in my spiritual life. I'm growing. I believe that this program is in potential if it's done right with the right mentor, like we have Mario Felix, a football coach, who has the right personality and character, uh, and uh, he's just well-formed himself to be able to mentor these kids. I believe that this could be a template for the rest of the country. Uh, there is not a vocation crisis. There is a lack of proper formation going on in the lives of young people. But when young people learn the faith and learn the Mass and learn the beauty of the Mass and come in contact with the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and they know it and understand it, I believe that our kids are going to be breaking down the doors of seminaries across this country, answering the call to serve Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As a seminarian, that was the integral part of my formation, was being on the altar serving with the priest. And uh, with this program, you know, that's really what we're trying to show these guys, that it's not just for priesthood. It's just to show you the, the integral union you have with Christ and to grow in relationship with Christ because in doing that, anything you do in life, will, you'll be prosperous and you'll be happy. And so that's really what we're trying to encapture with this, with this program is a good relationship with Christ, but at the same time, understand their place, who they are, where they're at, and, and how do they respond to, to God's call. I would encourage my, my brother priests, whether they're the pastors or the associate pastor, to truly take an interest in their, their altar servers with the intention of being a priestly example so that more so young boys, because we're losing a lot of them, uh, that they would see that it is possible to be a man and in love with, with the Lord, with the church, and the things that are holy. And when young men see that from their priests, as well as being in a relationship with them, they begin to respect what they see and what they hear, and they become interested because they know that we have interest in them as well. I've always told them that they can't worry about what everybody else thinks about them. Just think about what God thinks about you. And if you're doing that God's will, then everything's okay. You're gonna, you're gonna be attacked. You're gonna be, you're gonna be persecuted. You're gonna be told that you think you're this or you think you're that. But it doesn't matter. Because as long as you know you have the truth on your side and you're doing God's will, you have everything you need. And that's basically what we're trying to instill in the guys. And from there, my gosh, anything's possible. I'm very happy that we made this decision to film the young men at Guardian Angel Church and to expose this to the rest of the country and to the world that there's a program out there that brings young men to know and serve Christ on the altar and have this great love for the Eucharist because this will spill over to 
whatever God calls these young men to do, whether they're priests, or fathers, or single men, I guarantee you, when a young man falls in love with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and in the Mass, there's no way he's going to leave his Catholic faith. And that's why we wanted to film this program, is to show others that it's possible to have this at your parish. On our website, we have the download of the program on paper on how to do this at your parish. It's made easy. I would hope that you would bring this to your pastor or those responsible for the serving of the altar at your parish. These young men told me that they're willing to risk their life for protecting the Holy Eucharist. Ask the servers at your parish if they're willing to do that. And if they're not willing to do that, this program's for you. May God richly bless you and your family.